All right, so that's that. So I'll start the walkthrough. I'm going to start. Um, these both have garbage in them. It opens them. Now, if they are both successful, it goes to get student, passes over there. It says get student, passes the file to get student. It reads the first one up to comma. Name is Fred One Soleil, appears to be okay. Then reads the second one until it fails. So it reads up to comma, it cannot read comma, then it stops and skips the comma. Student number is not read properly. Why not? Oh, because I did not skip the comma. See? I read up to comma and I just did, did not skip it, so that was wrong. I stop. So I read up to comma and then I stop. So let's do it one more time. This is exactly debugging that I was talking about. So I'll come over here one more time. I read it. So name is read. Now it reads the next one up to comma and reads the student number then reads the GPA and skips the thing so that and as you see look at the GPA 1.399998 and what is the value 1.4 again floating point stuff and G, uh, double stuff very dangerous careful all right so it comes in reads it then comes out goes to the second one passes the address of the second one the, did it read the second one yet? Fred Two Soleil, student number second one. So now I know it works properly. I'm just going to skip. So that's the third one. And comes out. I only read three, but it was more than that. But anyways, the, that, that's enough for us. So I want the first three. So it got the three students. And one by one, it's going to print it into a file. And closes all. And program ends. And when program ends, I open the file, take a look at stdout.txt, and these are the three records printed over there, and I have file printout. So file is much better. If they tell you read from file, you should be happy because you don't have to try to talk with that knucklehead who's sitting behind the, uh, uh, the keyboard and doesn't understand. You have to keep saying, you entered this wrong, you entered that wrong, and try to. You just see what the format is, and you write it, and you're done. So this is essentially files. Are we okay with this? All right. So text files. Text files, text files. Read the rest of the stuff yourself. I gave you some things. Records and fields, it doesn't matter. Read it. I just read it into a structure. So records and fields, you saw it. I did it. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so, excuse me. Yes. Uh, please, can you explain the clearing buffer function, like the flush key function? Okay. How it works? Okay. I have a question. You have to stay with me. You ask a question. Okay. Let's yeah. say you want to enter the number 20. Okay. What okay. are the keys you have to hit on your computer? 20, enter. Yes. So, it is 2, 0, and enter. new line. Enter is okay. new line, correct? Yes. Okay, how many things got entered into the keyboard? Three. Three characters. How many of them will be read by your function? The first two. Yes. What happens to that backslash M? It's, it's, it remains it's in the rest. keyboard. Yes. Hence, you have to flush it. Okay, but how the fun, I mean, the, the statement, how? I don't understand how it works. How it works? Oh, oh, oh I just, oh, well, th you're, ta <laughs> you're talking about this. Sure, 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 sure. Two seconds. I'm going to yes, write. It's just I'm, one line. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not one line. It's, I'll, I'll show it to you. It's not one. I'm going to write that while statement in a bigger, like bigger way. So you'll see what happens. Where did I do that? I think it was instruct or something. It was, no, th was it? The it was, uh, structures. Where did I? Um, so it's the next one. Uh, where did they put it? <laughs> so 27 probably. Yeah, flush key. So you said it's only one line, correct? Are you yes. with me? Okay. So what does it say? Tell uh, me. Wide, get shot. No, 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 no. What the one that I highlighted? 
the thing that I highlighted, what does it say? Get, uh, it's a function. Get care. What does it return? One character from keyboard, correct? Yes. So let's say you enter one, two, three, four, five, and hit enter, correct? Or let's not make go too wrong. 20 enter. That's what we see it, okay? Let's say okay. you have two, zero, and new line in the keyboard, correct? Yes. Now, get cal will return what? Will return two, correct? So what is in keyboard is this. Two, zero, and new line, okay? What does get cal return? Two, correct? Backslash? Huh? Two, correct? Okay. Is two equal to backslash n? Uh, no. So what does it, the condition's got to be two not equal to backslash n? Is it true or false? Uh, it's true. 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 Because it's true, while happens again. So again, it's going to read another one. This time, it's going to read zero. Is zero equal to backslash n? True. No. It is. It, it's not. So not equal becomes true, correct? Yes. So it's true. It happens again. Get care. It reads backslash n. Is backslash n equal to backslash n? Yes. Not equal to backslash n. Is it true or false? False. While loop ends and it goes out. Okay. <laughs> so the kindergarten version of it is this character ch. Okay. Do ch is equal to get care. But C programmers usually don't do this. While ch is not equal to backslash n. So that's one single line is the equivalent to this one. You follow? Yes, you read sir. one character. If it's not, you keep going. So that's what it is. Are we good now? Yes, good. Fantastic. Thank you, Herman. Good. And thank you for the question. I love that when you ask it. And it just be, don't be silent if I say something and, it's, uh, and it remains a mystery. Okay? So now we know what happened. And I just put it over there. So we know. And we don't need to do anything because that's confusing. But this is good. Okay. Any questions? All right. And let's take a look at this very quickly. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Data files, yada, yada, yada. Character strings, we talked about it. You know what it is. Take a look at the first workshop I gave for OP244. I literally wrote the source code for string header file in your part one. Okay? Take a look at it. You'll see what is string header file, string copy, string compare. They're all in there. Walk through it. Try to understand it. It's a good practice. It's a good practice. So that's characters. Character string is essentially a character array with a null at the end as a stop sign. So they wrote functions to handle these things, and they called it string header file. It's nothing but dealing with array of characters ending with a null. Done. So no, nothing extraordinary behind it, and you just... Uh, uh, check it out yourself and uh, go through it and then uh, review the first part of the, the workshop and it gets crystal clear on what it is. If you look at the first part of the workshop, everything's there. Tatiana and Vinny, you had questions? Or it was a misclick? Tatiana, Vinny, you said yes. To, is, is there any question? No? Okay. String library is essentially string header file. So str like for example, what is str len? I mean, it is so simple that like big, again, library functions are not necessarily difficult things to run to 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 write. Usually they write a uh, um, uh, let me just put over here files. So if this one is twenty twenty nine files. Let's see. Uh, library header files are things that are used so often that you, they don't want you to keep doing it again. So what is a string length? A string length essentially is going to tell you what is the length of the string. So if I actually enter something over here, 
So <clears throat> this is this is what's what it is. I'm just gonna write one and then read the list, please. So character str. Uh, I'm gonna put over here 50. Okay. Now I'm gonna say printf. Enter your name. And in here I'm gonna say what do I say? What do I say? I'm gonna say uh, scanf percent up to new line and I'm gonna get SDR and I'm gonna say your uh, F, uh, printf your name your name percent s is percent d characters long okay so what do I do I have str and in here I'm gonna have str len of str now what is this str len I'm gonna write it str len it is supposed to return a length so I'm gonna say integer str len and it receives a character point character array so I'm gonna write over here const character array because I don't want to change it all I need to do is to count until I hit zero so I'm gonna say int len is equal to zero and I'm gonna say uh, for uh, while while str i is not equal to or str len actually len is not equal to zero while I don't hit the null len plus plus return len so what happens if there is nothing in there len zero will be null it comes out then remains re zero if there are two characters first is not second is not the third one bill then it remains two and it returns the length easy breezy so now if I run the program that's str len to you so for that Soliman Lu I cannot type my own name Soliman Lu and it's gonna say Oh, your name? <laughs> 67 characters. What did I do? Uh, print your name. Oh, I forgot to put that over there. I forgot to close that. One more time. For that. There you go. Your, your name is 18 characters long, and that's what it is. So, essentially they put these little functions over here like what is string copy you get a destination you get a source you copy character character from the destination into source one by one and that's string copy the second one is so as a practice seriously do it yourself sdr sdr copy character destination constant character source Try to do it yourself at home. This is string copy. And make this thing work. It's as easy as that. Start copying from index 0 from source into destination until you hit null over here. As soon as you hit null to follow the rules, you set the destination and character null to. And you have yourself a string copy. Easy breezy. Do it yourself, please. Okay? And just go through... Uh, the functions of string header file they're all in there and if you want to know how it works look at the part one of your workshop it's all implemented right over there so that's the the string stuff input and output yeah these are all different the functions are all the same it's just one gets from a file and the other one gets from the uh, so get character f get c is like a get character that gets from a file again g just go through them they're all the same no difference and i don't want to go through them that much pointers arrays and structures we talked about that two dimensional arrays uh, again same thing as single dimension array but the difference is that now you have uh, a row and a column so um, Uh, 30 um, that's a st string header dot C 
with two dimensional arrays remember again it's nothing but uh, an array of arrays so in here I can say integer a 3 by 4 it means I have four three arrays of four integers and again you write the loop like that and it happens the exact same way how do you initialize it um, it is like this so you essentially you write an array of four so now I have three character three arrays and each one is four so I'm separating three arrays and in here I can have 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 110 and 120 so these are the four things I have in for integer i and j for i set to 0 i less than 3 and i plus plus um, in here I'm going to say for j equals 3, 0 j less than 4 and j plus plus and you can simply refer to those arrays one by one. So in here I'm going to say printf a percent d percent d is equal to and in here I'm going to put i, j, and a, i, and j. Okay. And and that's another percent D and I'll go to new line so if I write it like this you'll see that it starts from index 0 1 by 1 this is going to go from 0 to 3 this is going to go from 0 to 4 and that's exactly what it is 0 to 3 0 to 4 and you run it you have a two-dimensional array so you can actually deal it for with it as a box you can go through it one by one and uh, have uh, an array of arrays and again three-dimensional arrays who cares like I can have it I can, so let me just go over here just to show you can expand it you don't need to be taught for a two-dimensional array if you know a single dimension it's the same it doesn't make a difference just remember what I told you about an array an array points to the beginning of the thing so essentially a0 a1 and a2 are actually three pointers pointing to these three arrays and a is an array that points to those three pointers it's 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 just like that as simple as that so if I say over here uh, void prn ints void prn ints and in here I have integer array uh, let me let's make it a concept because I want to print it array and in here I'm gonna put size and I'll go printf percent D and let's see I'm gonna put a space after and in here I'm gonna say a r um, I print them one by one for um, integer I for I set to zero I less than size and I plus plus printing this as uh, a line of integers and then I'm gonna go to new line if I want to now I can actually do it like this instead of printing it like that I can simply go i3 and in here I can simply say prn ints and pass a i as an array of four integers because each one of them is an array of four integers and print it like that so now it's gonna print three and then print three print ints and each one is gonna be a single dimension of array that is pulled, pulled passed over here and it's done and if I print it the results gonna be like that so um, you can expand it to anything you want so 32 to dim array 
and func dot c and if you want to actually pass a two-dimensional array to a function it is the same way but remember always the last one remains empty so if I want to say over here void prn uh, table something like that so I want to print a table I'm gonna say constant integer ar it is gonna be three by last one's gonna be empty and I'm gonna put size in size so that will be the last one that you're uh, the last one that you're um, oh, sorry the first one the last one is always the one that stays so the last one you fill the first ones you so if you have a three-dimensional array the less the first one so it's gonna be many of by four so in here um, I'm gonna actually uh, call this one and put it in here so copy over here and put it in here so it goes up to size and it's gonna pass four to the other one which is a r i there you go so <clears throat> now in here I can actually say uh, prn table and pass a to it with how many do I have I have three right three of them there you go so <clears throat> now a is printed over there it is many arrays of four and this one is only an array of uh, integers and it's passed like that and it works the exact same way and again you can keep going like that and have uh, three-dimensional arrays four-dimensional arrays it does not make any difference just expand it and make sure you leave the last one so if you have an array that is supposed to be an array of an array of an array and keep going like that make sure to fill the rest and the first one is always empty so you can have three arrays of four by five or you can have five arrays of four by five by six if it's a four-dimensional array it doesn't make any difference you can just expand it as you want so it's the same thing as this one in 3 3 and that's uh, three-dimensional arrays and uh, wow so many things they are talking about so two-dimensional arrays we went through them mm. what do we have after this algorithms this is something that you have to completely go by yourself uh, algorithms essentially means uh, uh, common logics that uh, it's done so much that they put a standard thing for it so like for example you want to sort things in order you see over there it says that's fine uh, which one is masking forget about that uh, sorting for example bubble sort that we have um, oh it's selection sort that is doing selection sort and bubble sort two different ways to sort it and based on the type of data and data uh, structures that you have these these algorithm algorithms pull put the values of the pointers in an, uh, of, of a of an array in order and uh, um, you can simply uh, find the best way to do it and and, and you got to learn in data structure course which one of them are most efficient and uh, you can uh, select the, the things that you want so the usual um, actions that you have to take in a program sorting searching um, data storage and retrieval and all those things that are common things that are all put in um, in a database of algorithms uh, and it's out there that you can find out and C++ has uh, C and C++ it has a vast uh, library of them that you can refer to um, and uh, these are the things that you're going to learn later on in uh, uh, data structures and algorithm section uh, portability is uh, to tell you that not everything you write in one compiler runs in another for example Visual C++ is an extremely forgiving compiler you can do lots of garbage debugful awful code in it and accepts and runs it bring that one on matrix and it's it's gonna prevent you of doing it and as the newer version of C is coming out it makes it more strict and tries to make the language more robust by restricting bugs um, and uh, and that's about that as Forrest Gump says uh, and that's it Whew. that's the whole review for IPC 144 any questions
I know even if you have a question, your brain is completely fried now, but uh, um, this is as quick as I could go through it, and hopefully uh, now you can uh, start your OP244 with a little peace of mind. Zhou, you have a question. Zhou Chen? Do you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, could yeah. you explain uh, when we should uh, use this constant, uh, uh, like this line four constant, uh, uh, etc., something, or oh, sometimes we don't use, use it? Use common sense. When you are, every time that you are passing an address to a function, first of all, use constant only for addresses or constant values like text and stuff that you want to have at the top as global variables but anytime you are passing an address to a function that address can gives the function permission to change it because you are giving the address to make if your logic if your logic is to only access the data for reading make it constant if I am printing I'm not changing anything not I, if I do it like this it's gonna still work but it's a wrong thing to do because I want to make sure I guarantee I don't shoot myself in a foot by changing something that I only want to print it. So always think about the logic. If the logic says read, do not pass it uh, as a regular variable. Always pass it as constant. And for IPC144, constant applies only for arrays, which are essentially pointers. So I would say pointers, which means arrays are two. Did I answer the question, Joe? Yeah, thank you. All right. Any other question? No? Uh, hi, Farbet. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, uh, for string compare function, what exactly does this function return? Uh, uh, string function returns less than zero if left string comes first in dictionary, then write one. Uh, it returns I'm zero if they are the same, returns more than zero if the first one is greater than second one. Okay, uh, I remember in IPP, IPC144, my instructor said that it returns um, difference of the two strings. Don't, yes, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no. Don't, 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 don't. Yes, that's <laughs> the logic behind it, but you are not supposed to know that. What you're interested is in that string compare returns positive value when left string is greater than light right string, returns zero value when they are the same, returns negative when it returns, uh, um, returns uh, uh, when the left one is less than the right one. Obviously, the uh, syntax, the, 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 the code behind it is that. If you go to workshop part one, you will see that that's exactly what I did. You see that? I go one by one and I test it. If they are not the same, I return the difference. And because ASCII code of A is smaller than ASCII code of Z, automatically it's going to be a negative value. It is the difference, but that's not the reason. We are not sending the reference. The whole purpose is to be less than zero if this one is uh, greater than zero if this one is greater, less than is zero, and so on and so forth. So it's not that is the difference. It is the difference, but the reason for it is that they want it to be done that way. Um, I have tested in my program. Uh, my program uh, I'm sorry. My program always return one minus one or three or zero. It never returns more than one or less than minus one. Um, because uh, current compilers are C++ compilers, okay? And C++ oh. compilers try to have one as true for Boolean. If you go mm -hmm. to an old compiler, C compiler, it is the difference. Mm -hmm. okay. But C++ compiler returns this. Not it. It, it okay. actually it actually returns. Yeah. No, no, not that. It returns this. So essentially, mm -hmm. it says, if I write it over here, it's going to be crazy. It says, if this is less, mm -hmm. and then it return one, otherwise returns zero. It tries to return something that is easily convertible to boolean. Okay. Minus one and one, yeah. but don't, it is the difference. 
Okay, I understand okay. it now. Thank you. All right. Any other question? Any Excuse questions? me, sir. Yes. R regarding the the last lecture, I'm just wondering where is the recording because I I really want to to review it. Oh dear, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna. If you look at at how did you get in here? What did you click on? No, I, I, there is one recording for the first lecture, but the second one is not there. I think oh, you're you talking, are you my student? Yeah. And okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Let me show it to it. So I thought you're not my student. So um, um, again, uh, the recording is going to come here. I'm going to do it either today or tomorrow morning. So if you go over here, because the recording, somebody's student number came up, I actually unpublished it and I'm and I just finished the YouTube video and I blurred it I have to put it on thing but if you come over here it says recordings of previous session you see that I'm gonna post everything in here so it's gonna be a link you click over here and you go to them okay okay all right I'm gonna post it over there you'll see it okay any other question any question one any question two? All right, we started with 57, we ended with 36, so 20 casualties all the way through. I hope that those people actually can follow later on what's happening. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, thank you very much for joining. And uh, I'm gonna stop the recording in Armando, hopefully, or anyone else that is gonna go through the recording when I post it. Please give me the timelines so I can okay. add the time. Okay. You've done it where do you want me to send it to you on teams teams is fine then i'm going to add it to the repository but anywhere you send it i appreciate it 10 uh, okay. for your midterm test <laughs> thank joking. you very much. i'm joking i'm not gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you thank you i'll, I'll, no, no worries, no worries. I'll remember it. your favor <laughs> thank you all right okay everyone thank you have yourself a wonderful day and, and um i'll thank see you thank you in very class. much sir no problem thank you professor. cheers everyone thank you, thank you professor bye bye thank you